Well, New South Wales glued to the latest scandal rocking the premiership, this time Gladys Berejiklian, wearing the fallout of a private workplace relationship. But don't get sniggering too quickly. The workplace is full of friendships. So what pitfalls, uh, well, yours is yours leading you into? Well, who knows? When it's people and culture strategies, you, you need the people and culture master. Joy Deep Hall, he joins us live out of Sydney. Joy Deep, pleasure to have you on the program. Thanks for joining us. It's a messy situation, uh, workplace relationships, or at least it can be. Probably can also work um, well. Just give us an idea of what people need to be aware of and, and what this really reflects about workplace relationships. It's always an unfortunate situation. I mean, there's there's nothing wrong with workplace relationships until there is something wrong with it, right? Um, the, the reality is that a, a significant number of workplace relationships do happen. A significant number of couples form as a result of interactions they've had either in a, a client service provider capacity or as, or as co-workers. But increasingly what we're, we're, we're finding is that whether it's in the political arena or in the corporate arena, it's, it's when something does go wrong. It's when perhaps that relationship sours or it's when there is maybe a, a third party invent, intervention such as a, an ICAC inquiry or a customer complaint or whatever it might be, that all of a sudden something that might have been kept under wraps and kept under wraps for good reason is seen to be problematic and it gives rise to all sorts of questions as to, well, why wasn't this disclosed and all sorts of criticisms in relation to a person's judgment. And it's an issue that has troubled organisations for a very long time, some of whom um, are now moving to a space where they are mandating disclosure uh, of any kind of uh, close relationships, whether they are romantic relationships or familial relationships or some historical relationships, in the interest of managing those optics. And, and it's just becoming more and more of a problem, um, frankly, notwithstanding that the incidence of them are probably, is probably increasing. Because not to get into the nitty gritty, but look, you know, there's a grey area around, you know, what you disclose, right? This is the problem, you know, what people define as a relationship these days. I mean, I'm not going to comment, but there's certainly grey areas. Absolutely. And, and organisations need to, at the very least, be consistent about this. And I, I can understand that um, organisations, as a matter of diligence and good practice, should be saying, look, if there is a direct reporting line between two people who are in a relationship and the boss, the more senior person, is going to be determining bonuses and career progression and things like that, absolutely there, there is a need for that to be disclosed. And, and indeed, organisations should have a pretty low threshold, I think, for when, when that needs to happen. But as you say, um, when is a relationship uh, otherwise required to be disclosed? I mean, is, is it OK if you're just really good friends with someone, even though you're not romantically involved? Well, we know that as decision makers, you can be just as compromised or just as biased in that situation um, as you can be if you're romantically involved with someone. And in many instances, and, and there's plenty of evidence of this, People who are in a consensual relationship in a workplace are, are often the, the, the most proper um, and diligent when it comes to ensuring no conflict and, and detaching and removing themselves from any decisions that have to do with the other person. So it, 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 it's a tough one. But what I think has made this situation very difficult is that the, the current uh, noise around the alleged corruption issues, of course, means that... Uh, everything is now looked at through that particular lens. Whereas, of course, if, mm. if that was not something that was being looked at at the moment, then you'd be saying, well, was this anything other than just maybe an error of judgment? So using, obviously, the New South Wales Premier as an example, she's, mm. the, the perception is that she's essentially been too trusting in that relationship, and that's now cost her considerably. Um, whether it be a government or a corporation, if a leader is seen to be too trusting and then... Um, pays for it, does that essentially undermine the confidence in that leadership? Yeah, I think it, it definitely can. And and I, I think the question about whether someone is too trusting is a, a very dangerous way to be uh, labelling or criticising any particular leader, because, of course, the, the opposite of being too trusting is, is being cynical and being not trusting enough. And that's hardly empowering and hardly a, a philosophy or a mindset that's going to get the best out of your people. So the, the issue of trust is, of course, an important one that any leader is encouraged to develop in their immediate team and, and indeed broader. So I, I don't necessarily think the issue is too trusting. I think that the, the issue here is that um, if you find yourself in a situation where thinking forward, you've got to play out the worst case scenario. What if the person who I'm involved with does engage in something, notwithstanding that I hope that they don't and they may not, 
if they do engage in something which I don't have visibility over and it can make me look bad if for no other reason but because I'm the Premier or I'm the CEO of this organisation, well, is it something that I, I probably need to either disclose, so at least I'm not embarrassed and it comes out down the track, um, or is it something that I need to back away from or need to... Uh, you know, pigeonhole in a particular way, all of which is easy to say with the benefit of hindsight, and that doesn't factor in at all the emotional uh, elements of all of this. None of it, none of it's easy. Jody Poor, terrific to get your opinions this <laughs> afternoon, and uh, yeah, look, there's still a lot to play out, obviously, as far as the premier is concerned. So thanks very much. Absolutely, thanks for having me.